Hello, and welcome to Automate with Red Hat Ansible. I'm Daniel Newman, your host. I'm principal analyst and founding partner at Futurum Research. Excited to continue this multi-part high impact series of quick takes on various items going on in the automation space. And today I'm joined by Ed Quayle, and we're gonna be talking about financial services. Ed? Awesome, thank you for having me, first of all. Ed, I'm super excited to have this conversation with you. The financial industry, financial services is always on the cutting edge of technology and innovation, tons of complexity with regulatory compliance. Uh, talk to me about, you know, what are the big concerns right now in the financial services industry that you're seeing? There's been a lot of focus on network automation and being able to deliver products and services to their customers even faster than before. Um, we've seen a, a growth in this in recent years. Um, I would say that before COVID and pre-COVID era, um, there was a lot of focus on IT operations and, and reducing spend um, within the central IT organization. Um, businesses that have kind of focused on speed and, and, and time to market um, and kind of put some of the, the key components and key use cases kind of to the side. And, and with that, we see compliance, um, security, and um, your traditional IT operations, day-to-day -day tasks that they're currently doing mostly manual. Now, if, if we take that and, and kind of look at it from at a higher level, what, what we'll see is um, there's, there's this day-to-day -day toil that isn't being taken care of, and it's not able to move the business forward with their goals around speed to market and um, de even deploying network automation. And so you have this drift back to kind of that hub and spoke model, you have the hub spinning at a different speed than the spokes and they're competing against each other. What automation really brings is a holistic conversation um, between these two teams. And what I would challenge the, the markets is, is to focus on compliance and focus on the day-to-day -day toil that engineers and IT operations folks are kind of going through today and, um, and you know, automating that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's so much to automate, but like you said, there's so much complexity. There's the customer facing side of automation, which of course there's a ton of demand for. Customers want more and more tools. Uh, financial services companies are competing with, you know, emerging fintechs that are built and born on cloud. And these companies have legacy process. And of course they have more regulation, more compliance requirements. Talk a little bit about that in particular. There's so much going on with the compliance space for these financial services institutions that automation has to be one of the keys for them to be able to keep up with the disruptors. That's a great question, Daniel. Um, what I'm seeing in that particular area is that these banks have been held to these regulation, regulatory and compliance standards for many years and, and, and decades, if you will. They're, the data in many cases already exists. It's about what to do with that data. How do you address it so that it doesn't become a, a, a bigger issue in the future? And, and so, you know, you think about modernization to cloud, you had mentioned cloud as being kind of one of the big target areas for, for banks to get into, right? That streamlines the data perspective to a little bit, but it doesn't hit on the core fundamental piece of what do you do with that data once you have it, right? How do you resolve an issue once you've address that it, it has occurred. Um, and I think that that's where automation really kind of bridges the gap. Um, if, if you can template that data, if you will, template it and, and take action on it, point something like Ansible or in-house automation tools to that data so that you're making a decision based on that data um, to take an action, you now have resolved the issue that could lead to further compliance problems. And I think for quite a long time that has been the resistance for these banks is that the compliance and regulatory environment are putting a ton of pressure on them to modernize their IT, to be able to deliver, like I said, the next generation of experiences for customer, but also managing that compliance, making sure that that data is protected. We all know we're one breach away from lost trust. Um, you know, if you can't follow compliance, you can't compete. But at the same time, like I said, a lot of these disruptors don't have the same set of rules because they're not being regulated by the same bodies. And of course, that should change and that might change over time. But right now, this is where things like automation come into play and they change the landscape and help these companies be more 
competitive. Now, as somebody who spends a lot of time at looking at these businesses, being a uh, advisor partner uh, to the financial services companies, where do you see this going? How does it evolve to make sure that the legacy financial services companies become the future service providers to the market? I would say almost nine times out of 10, what I'm hearing from my customer stakeholders is they want to get to a place of self-healing infrastructure. And when you dig down a little bit deeper, because um, you know it's in my nature to try to find out what the customer wants to do, why they want to do it, and how they're, gonna, they're thinking about going about it. And typically it's hinged on AI ops. Um, I've seen a, a huge push towards AI ops in, in the past um, few years within the financial services industries. And I, I think they're taking, they're taking it at a little bit at face value. Um, I mentioned earlier that they have, they have data, right? What they need to do is essentially create patterns, patterns for when X happens, trigger Y, right? That can reduce toil, that can reduce the manual effort that's seen within the IT operations teams. It can also increase your speed to market um, for the for the business units and lines of business that are trying to meet the end user's customer expectations. It, it isn't that complicated. We have the data. In many cases, I, I'm working with banks right now who have that data and have a collection of data well into the past to be able to make that decision off of. It's about categorizing them, creating templates, understanding what needs to happen when this thing hap- when this thing occurs, and taking an action item on it. And uh, from that, you get the foundational components of being able to have a self-healing and event-driven automation service. Yeah, I think in the future, we're going to see the adoption pick up. We're going to see the tools continue to become even more simple. And of course, um, that combination will yield higher use, better experiences, better uptime. So you got the security, the compliance, the regulatory cover. And then, of course, that always stems upstream to delivering world-class customer experiences. Ed Quayle, thank you so much for taking some time and sitting down with me today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for tuning in to Automate with Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform. Please subscribe to hear and watch all of these episodes. To learn more about Red Hat Ansible, you can follow the company on Twitter at Ansible or visit the website, ansible.com. For more on Futurum Research, Follow at Futurum Research on Twitter or on the web at futurumresearch.com.